Okay, so uh, section 6.6 six, uh, talks about ideal processes and reversible and irreversible processes. All right, so no heat engine can have an efficiency of 100%, but what's the best we can do? What's the highest efficiency it can have? Well, that leads us to the ideal process, and the ideal process is a reversible a reversible process. A reversible process is a process that can be reversed without leaving any trace on the surroundings. So both the system and the surroundings uh, have to return to their initial states. Reversible processes don't actually occur, right? They're theoretical. Uh, why would we study them? A few reasons. Uh, because uh, that's kind of our goal. That's what we're aiming towards. We're seeing who can get the closest. We know nobody's going to get there, but who can get there and how close to them can we get. Um, also, uh, one reason is they are easy to analyze. All right, sometimes the math, the equations are easier for reversible processes. And so what we can do is we can compare... our actual process to the reversible reversible process. Okay, reversible processes are the ones that will deliver the most work possible if that's what we're aiming for, right? If if like a car engine Right, car engines, we're trying to get work out of it. A turbine, we're trying to get work out of it. Or the flip side of that, maybe what we're really trying to do is trying to use something that will consume the least amount of work in, like a compressor, fans. Uh, so it depends on uh, what type of a uh, process it is. Uh, but reversible processes are the ones that are the best, the ideal. They'll give you the most work if that's what you're wanting, or they'll consume the least work if uh, it's that type of process. Reversible processes are the theoretical limits. Uh, I like to call it the unreachable, un, ugh, unreachable goal. All right. We're, we're not going to have reversible processes in nature, in real life, because of friction, because of unrestrained expansion of, of gases, or fast compression, or expansions of gases, uh, but heat transfer through temperature differences. All of these make processes irreversible. Mixing of fluids could be irreversible. Electric resistance, chemical reactions, deformations of solids, these are all irreversible. So we're going to have a little bit of some of these. Uh, right here, heat transfer through a temperature difference. The only way we have a heat transfer is through a temperature difference. Uh, so that, that's why there's processes are never going to be reversible. All right, so heat transfer only occurs when there is a temperature difference. There's no such thing as a reversible heat transfer, but if we can get the temperature difference as small as can be, then we could almost, you know, consider it irreversible. So we're going to have some heat transfer through temperatures that are the same temperature, okay? Uh, that's a reversible heat transfer, uh, if that makes sense. We're going to assume those, those temperatures are as close to the same. There's a very small temperature difference, uh, so that it's almost reversible. All right. All right. Some things could be internally reversible or externally reversible or actually reversible. Internally reversible is reversible inside the boundaries. Um, so this is the system, right? Our our pro our object is reversible. Externally reversible is reversible outside the boundaries. 
right? The surroundings. But in order for something to be reversible, actually reversible, then both the uh, system and the surroundings have to be reversible, both internally and externally reversible. All right, both internally and externally reversible would make it, you know, actually reversible.